I'm Danny Barnes with the CCA, and I'm joined right now by the head coach of the Cal State Dominguez Hills women's basketball team, John Bonner. How are you doing today, coach? I'm doing great, Danny. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Always and always enjoy this. Gives us a chance to just find out a little bit what's behind the numbers a little bit and get a chance to learn about the Toros. Well, um, right now we're on the unofficial halfway point of the season. I know we've only played 10 games to this point. Uh, your team has. You're going to come back fully full CCA schedule right now. You guys have played four in that one, but I'm just hoping you could talk to me a little bit about just the first part of the year and some of your schedule, especially you guys definitely opened up with some very tough games. So if you could just tell me the schedule you set up for yourself and how it's gone so far. Yeah, we wanted to try to challenge ourselves pretty early, especially coming off the year we had uh, last year. We knew our team would be a little bit different and our identity would be a little bit different, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we tried to challenge ourselves by playing some of the you know, better teams in the Pac West and the GNAC just to kind of give us an idea of just where we are. Uh, we've been trying to work through that schedule a little bit, um, a little more daunting. We've had, a, you know, just kind of battling some injuries here and there, but uh, definitely kind of opened our eyes and, you know, in a way exposed us a little bit so that we knew as coaches what we need to work on to get our team prepared uh, for the CCAA. Well, um, on that note, you guys – like you said, might have wished you had a couple more wins over, under your belt, but you did close out that first half of the year with a couple wins. You got one in the in the CCA over Monterey Bay, and they picked up another one against Bethesda. Just how important was it, and how do you guys feel going into break slash coming out of break right now? It, yeah, I think every win kind of fuels some confidence, right? I think you can learn through wins and losses, and clearly there's a lot we need to clean up, but I thought we did a better job of trying to put things together. You know, uh, as we're trying to work through some injuries, we're still trying to figure out our team and – trying to build, you know, new chemistry with new players yeah. and trying to define our identity. And, and those two games kind of gave us an opportunity to play a couple more people, try to try to move some lineups around, kind of mix our lineups up a little bit, kind of see what we can get. But I think, you know, for the confidence of your team, you want to find some success through the wins because I think sometimes it's a little bit easier to teach through those and not necessarily always teach through the losses. So I guess I got to ask you, this wasn't one I'd written down, but I got to just ask in the way. Do you feel your team still kind of searching for its identity at this point of the season? Yeah, I do. I do. You know, uh, every year, right, when you talk about, like, your team's culture, right, the culture is set by the players, but the standards set by the coaches. And so <laughs> I feel like we have our standards. I feel like our returners have our standards. But I think we're trying to define who we are. You know, last year it was, wasn't about shooting. You know, it was more we're going to defend, we're going to rebound. Um, and then we're just trying to overwhelm people a little bit, get you get the ball inside. And I think this year we still want to defend and rebound. We haven't done a, a great job of that yet. I, I think that's still to come. But then it's also now um, acclimating to just some newer players and trying to uh, use their skill sets to our advantage. I think we're going to be a team that's going to end up shooting the ball pretty well. Um, I think we're going to be able to spread the floor out a little bit better. We just haven't found that rhythm yet. Again, uh, as we work through all the – the different in and out with the lineup. I think once we adjust that, then I think there should be a shift in what people see from us on the floor. No, that makes a lot of sense. And even as I looked at the numbers, I mean, I hate to kind of say it this way, coach, but some of the numbers didn't quite bear out the record. You know what I mean? It, it probably was a couple of those ones that were a couple close losses or something like that. Cause I looked there, you guys are second in the conference and rebounding margin right now and lead the conference in rebounds overall. So I'm sure that, um, remembering how much Asia Jordan, how good of a rebounder she is. I'm sure that's part of the identity that you guys are trying to get back to a little bit in that, but let's, let's talk about that one through. Um, what would be something that maybe you haven't mentioned, maybe something that doesn't show up in the stats as much, but would be a strength of this team, something maybe an intangible for this team that you hope you've seen a seed from and you hope it grows in the future. You know what? I think it's just the connectedness of the team you know one thing that we're really happy about is the chemistry that we try to build with one another and you know this has kind of been uh it's been a standard since i've been here but the last two years um we've done a really good job of trying to connect with each other i do believe that players and coaches have to invest in one another in order to achieve success and one thing that doesn't show up is how well this team does get along they support each other on and off the court you know, uh, we still battle every day. We're trying to get better at being a, a little more competitive. I think we're still kind of nice in practice. <laughs> Off the court, I'm always impressed by how much they can rely on one another as they're going through other things that aren't related to, you know, the game itself. I think they rely on each other for the game. But at the same time, you know, these are still young people who are trying to figure out their lives. And so to be able to rely on one another 
it just improves their overall chemistry because, you know, in the midst of a game, right, there's going to be times where things get heated. Uh, you have to just speak to your teammate in the in the heat of the battle, and you're going to say certain things. But I think because of their relationships off the court, they don't take those things personal. They know, hey, this is just about basketball, and we're trying to go win. And I think when you're able to communicate on that level, that leads to a lot of success. And so the thing that people – that they don't see is we're just trying to put together the basketball part. The off-the-court part uh, is really strong with this team, and I'm looking forward to see – you know, that translate a little bit more on the court, but I'm really happy with how they support each other and take care of each other off the court. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. And like you said, going how good your season was last year and then coming into this year with so many returners, I guess from you as a coach, do you reference last year at all? Or is it kind of this is a whole new team and we don't even talk about last year for drawing from that experience? You know, I think it's it's a mix of both, right? I think you you try to refer to it just in regards to some of the – the positive intangibles, as you kind of mentioned, that you might see on a team uh, that had had that kind of run. But we also have to define who we are now. You know, last year's team, uh, every year when we when we kind of meet with our players at the beginning of the year, we let them know, like, hey, this is the last time that you're going to see this team as presently constructed. And we want to create as many memories as we can with this team as it stands. Okay. And so each year you're going to get a new team, uh, a different culture, um, you know, different personalities. And so – uh, even though we might reference it, we understand that we're trying to form what this year's team should be about. And, you know, last year's team is last year's team. I mean, we lost major key contributors on that team, right? An All-American. We lost some all-commerce players. So uh, we understand, though, now we're trying to just define who we are. And so we try to focus on what's in front of us, the present, and how we can move forward with the team that we have without too much reference to it. But I think there's always lessons learned from a championship team that you want to make sure that you can communicate to the next group. Well, well, thank you, Coach. Like I said, just a, such a unique question for you based off the success you had winning the regional and everything last year. So thank you for letting – thank you for just sharing it with me and the fans. Absolutely. So with you, as you mentioned, this is a new new team, all that other stuff. I got one more question from for you, and then we're going to go into the rapid-fire one. Yeah. What has surprised you about the team this year that maybe you didn't expect back in when your team came together in August or something like that, that now in December you're like, okay, this surprised me. Uh, our toughness, yeah. you know, I think, uh, you know, with, with some key contributors kind of leaving, um, I wasn't sure how tough we were going to be as a collective unit coming in, because, uh, if you haven't played in the CCAA, you don't know exactly what it takes to win. And sometimes it's less about skill and more about who shows up and who's going to be the toughest team that day. And I think at the beginning of the year, I wasn't sure just how tough, you know, this new team was clearly, you know, individuals and some of our returners and what that was going to be about. But collectively, I've seen their toughness grow uh, each day in our practices and how they respond to, you know, tough coaching, adverse situations that we try to create in practice. And so I think that's what's been the most surprising. And although it has not shown up in games consistently, uh, we can shoot the basketball pretty well. <laughs> and it's, I'm hoping that it, that it translates into a game. But I'm probably more impressed with our toughness and resiliency, and I, I think that's going to serve us well uh, going down this, you know, what is it, 17 games, 18 games that we have left uh, in conference. I think we're going to be able to see that, and and I'm excited for it, and uh, I think our fans will be too once they kind of see that come to fruition. I love it, Coach. Thanks for being so honest, yeah. and thank you for the great answers. All right, got another set for you right here, the rapid-fire questions, um, and we'll just throw them out at you. Just give me your first answer off the top of your head. Who is your best one-on-one -on -one perimeter defender? Ooh, gosh, that's a split. Two names came to mind, uh, Aza Jordan or Hosanna Walker. All right, I take it. Who is your best rebounder? Aza Jordan. Okay. Would you rather score 90 or hold a team below 50? <laughs> if, 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 okay, are we saying they're both in a win? They're both in a win, yes. All right, score 90. Okay, okay, I'll take it. What is your favorite practice drill? I think for me, we do a drill called one-on-one -on -one closeouts where we split the teams up and they get to go one-on-one -on -one from different areas. You get uh, no more than three dribbles and you get two seconds to make a decision. And uh, it's continuous. You know, the offense can score as many points as they can until the defense gets the ball, but that typically gets our team fired up to compete. Um, that's our best, probably our offensive drill. And then defensively, we have a uh, – 
it's called perfect 30 drill we kind of got from uh, Kentucky women's basketball, but you got to play 30 seconds of perfect defense. And that includes rebounding, not allowing any offensive rebounds. And the offense gets to shoot as much as they can within that 30 seconds. And if they get an O board or they get a make, it resets the shot clock. And so our team gets fired up about getting multiple stops in a row. And so uh, those are probably my favorite drills that, that I get fired up about. And then our team loves to do them. I love it. And thanks for explaining those ones. It makes it very yeah, fun. Absolutely. All right. When you go on the road, where's the toughest place to play in the CCAA? Oh, man, I think it's humble. I think they create a great environment there. They, you know, they have their student section is rocking. Their band is talking to you. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, you know, a daunting drive to get up there. Um, so to me, that's always fun. And I think Chico, they get a good crowd as well. And so, uh, but I think humble kind of takes the cake for being the toughest place on the road. All right. Thank you, coach. Put you off the hot seat, but just thank you for sharing a little bit about the Toros in the first half of the season. And just thank you for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you, Danny. Good talking to you. Absolutely. Good luck the second half of the year. Thank you. Take care.